you had a talk in CSI about the uh, role of IV, FCM, ferric carboxymaltose in heart failure management. So, sir, may I ask you um, how common is anemia in heart failure in globally or in India? What's your opinion? Yeah, uh, actually, anemia. If if you go through the literature, we don't have very hard data from our own country. But if you go through the literature, anemia is a very common problem. Uh, in uh, prevalence studies, it has ranged from anywhere around 20% to over 50% and uh, in the registries and other studies it is to the tune of again 40 to 50%. So a very large chunk you could say on an average almost half the people actually have anemia if you take the criteria of diagnosing a hemoglobin of less than 12 grams uh, per deciliter as the level of uh, a level at which uh, you diagnose anemia, then it is a very common problem. Mm -hmm. In addition, um, what people have uh, also noted is that in many people you may not have frank anemia, but you do have iron deficiency, which basically means that your serum ferritin levels are less than 100 micrograms per liter or you have a serum ferritin which is between 100 to 300 micrograms per liter and your transferrin saturation that is less than 20 percent. So if you use these three cr criteria, the incidence of iron deficiency and or uh, uh, anemia uh, exceeds you know more than 50 percent. Mm -hmm. Surely across mm -hmm. the board in most studies it is an extremely common problem. The anemia in India and the subcontinent is much higher compared in the western world. Yes. So do you see anemia with heart failure patients also would be much higher the prevalence would be much higher comparing those two. Stand, stands to good reason actually because uh, as such uh, we have a lot of uh, problems with our uh, diets uh, as in um, we are mostly vegetarians. Uh, we know that um, and vegetarian foods uh, ex except for very green leafy vegetables mm -hmm. they are a poor source of iron. Uh, the, the better sources are non-vegetarian foods. Then uh, another uh, important fact is that many of the Indians are fond of taking tea after mm -hmm. their food and uh, that actually precipitates uh, the iron, the tannic acid in that uh, actually precipitates the iron and decreases the iron absorption by, a, by as much as a whopping 70% or so. Mm -hmm. So for these reasons, uh, anemia in Indians, uh, there is a good reason that the anemia incidence should be higher in Indian population. And in heart failure, uh, I, I would uh, uh, admit that going through the you know literature and preparing for this talk, I realized that this was a very important thing and uh, I'm actually going to prospectively look for it in our uh, population because we cater to poorer people. So uh, the chances are that uh, the incidence of anemia and iron deficiency is extremely high in our right, population. Sir. So as you correctly said, sir, maybe this anemia in heart failure might have been overlooked yes. by the clinicians in the yes. country and cardiologists, they mostly look for the treating the cardiological conditions, yes. not the anemia. Yes. So this definitely this area is coming up and the awareness is increasing. Yes. So you uh, spoke about the role of intravenous ferric carboxymaltose. Yes. So how do you see this molecule, sir? What the clinical data says about this molecule? Oh. Uh, See, there are. It's a. It's an extremely good molecule, uh, for several reasons. Uh, uh, one thing, uh, the uh, when people have used oral iron in ferric carboxymalto uh, in uh, treatment of anemia in heart failure, uh, they it hasn't been really very successful. It is more cumbersome. Uh, the iron absorptions from the GI tract in patients with heart failure are erratic. Uh, number three. Now, as such, iron preparations can cause GI upset and in patients with heart failure, they have a greater propensity to cause GI upsets. And furthermore, uh, whatever studies are available, they haven't shown a very significant improvement and certainly no improvement in mortality uh, or hospitalizations mm -hmm. um, when oral, uh, oral things have been yeah, used. Yes. Compared to other intravenous preparations that are available, primarily iron sucrose preparation has been studied 
in patients with heart failure. Again, though the six-minute walk test increased in some of the studies, but beyond that, there was no other advantage. And uh, you have to give repeated injections. Uh, all those problems are there. Ferric carboxymaltose offers you a lot of advantages. Uh, you know, in our country, uh, we have many a times patients who you cannot expect to regularly follow and follow up at short intervals. Repeated studies may not be possible. So this, in a large majority of patients, can be given as a single injection. Um, it has been seen that the disadvantages that exist with other intravenous iron preparations in the form of allergic reactions, right. all those are not there. They're extremely uncommon. So it is a very safe drug. It can correct the entire problem in one go. You can give up to 1000 milligrams of ferric carboxymaltose and uh, more than one gram deficits, uh, they, are, they are there, but they are not that common. Mm -hmm. So uh, at the most in two doses, one week apart, uh, using ferric carboxymaltose, you can put up a total correction of the RN deficiency. And so, mm, this is really a great uh, advance. Right, sir. And also, how do you see the clinical improvement for after correcting the anemia in these heart failure patients in terms of NOIHA class improvement? Oh, or yes. There the is See, in terms of the benefits that accrue, uh, we need to remember that the six minute walk time improves. The <clears throat> If you talk to these patients, they feel better. Right. What has been evaluated is the Kansas City cardiomyopathy questionnaire score uh, and that improves significantly. The number of hospitalizations for heart failure reduces significantly and a composite uh, uh, when they've actually analyzed the whole data, the uh, meta-analysis, mm -hmm. they found that actually a composite of mortality, whether it is total mortality or cardiovascular mortality with heart failure uh, admissions, that also reduces. So anything, I mean, it is so powerful that it is reducing a composite of total mortality and hospitalizations. Right. Uh, so it is an effective mode of uh, therapy. Right, sir. So, sir, thank you. And if I just uh, ask you to conclude your talk, sir, what would be two, three key messages you want to deliver to the audience? sir? Yeah, I, I, I think that uh, Mm, the key messages would be like this, that uh, anemia and iron deficiency are a very prevalent and pertinent problems. They are a reversible cause. Uh, uh, they, they are a cause which can be reversed and it can lead to an improvement in mortality and morbidity. So we uh, as cardiologists and physicians should actively look for the presence of both uh, anemia and iron deficiency. So you should do at least uh, uh, a hemoglobin and a ferritin level and a transferrin saturation level and categorize your patient as having iron deficiency or anemia. Treat this because when you are giving other drugs which are reducing mortality and morbidity, you are giving beta blockers, you are giving ACE right. inhibitors, you are giving mineral corticoid receptor antagonists. Yes. This is a much simpler and uh, uh, a much rapidly uh, effective therapy. So it should be given to the patients. Thank you, sir. So I feel your talk was really an eye opener. And now onwards, the Indian clinicians and the cardiologists, they will look into this matter very seriously. Uh, eye-opener for me as well. <laughs> I, I would say yes, uh, it should be an eye-opener for many of us uh, uh, who haven't been looking at this problem seriously. How common is anemia in heart failure in globally or in India? What's your opinion? Yeah. Uh, Actually, anemia 